Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Minis. Today, we are continuing the Alan Moore run of Swamp Thing. Uh, the saga of Swamp Thing, I guess. Uh, and this is uh, issue 22 from March 1984. And uh, right away, we see the cover on this is an interesting cover. It's Swamp Thing fighting... Uh, every major monster that he fought in the early 70s run, the, the run we already read. So, um, he's got like the big brain monster he fought and the big robot and Frankenstein and the dinosaur and a werewolf and the weird like crocodile alien man inside of a spacesuit. And, uh, yeah, so he's fighting all of them, uh, on his own on the front of this cover. So it's kind of interesting. It's like, what does that mean? But uh, I'm sure it will explain itself. Um, as we, uh, see on the first page here uh abby and matt cable are looking for swamp thing she is like i know he must be here somewhere where did he go i you know we got to find him because if you remember from uh the the last issue he was captured uh after he ran away from them and like saved them from everything going on um and so they don't know that he was captured and so he broke out and now he's back in the swamp but they're they don't know where he is and uh, they've been looking for him the whole time. So they're looking and Matt Cable's like, come on, like, well, I'm sure we'll find him somewhere, but we got jobs. We got to get, you know, we got to like, basically our, our whole lives are fucked because we, uh, lost our identities, like our old ones. So now we have to make new ones and get jobs and things. So let's do that before you find the swamp thing, you know? And, uh, then she like kind of stumbles onto this area that looks a little greener and she sees it's actually Swamp Thing's body laying down. It's very cool because there's like, it's rooted in areas, but you can still see like his arm and like the shape of his torso and his face, which has very distinct like uh, growth lines on it, like where his eyes and nose and mouth are, are full of water, like a water puddle in each eye and everything. So it looks very cool. Uh, and she is freaked out by this. She's like, oh my God, is he dead? What's going on? You know, and she keeps calling him Alec because she doesn't know yet that, that, uh, he is not a human. He is actually some earth, uh, you know, something. He says he's a plant, something that thinks it's a human, uh, which, which was revealed to us last issue. And so she's like, oh my God, what, what is that? And she like sees a bug in his arm and she's like, oh, a bug. Like, how dare like, oh, that's so gross. I can't believe it. Is he dead? Like, please don't say he's dead. And so uh, as they're saying this, someone else is in the woods watching them in the swamps. And then we see it's someone with like a very weird orangish looking hand. It's kind of barky. Uh, and then we see someone spraying, like uh, pulling out a can of aerosol uh, something, aerosol spray. And it says flexi flesh on it. And he sprays it on him, his hand. And we see, oh, it like creates skin looking. So... Then this guy comes out of nowhere. He's got like, <laughs> he's got like a weird, like trench coat on, and that's about it. And he's like, "Oh, did I startle you? Like, hey, what are you doing here?" And they're like, "Wait, who are you?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm, uh, Jason Woodrew. I'm a friend of Alex, and I used to work for Sunderland, but now I, uh, I'm trying to help Alex." And so like he's trying to explain to them and. It's very weird. He he always comes off as like when he's trying to be human, I can never tell how human he actually looks in the, from these drawings. He looks kind of like his face is melting a little bit all the time. So I always wonder like do the do they see that or are they just like weirded out by his mannerisms because they never actually feel like they believe what he's saying or they're not comfortable with him is for sure. Um, and so is it just the way he looks or is it the way he's talking and whatnot? Um, but basically he explains, you know, uh, he's not a man at all. He's not actually a Holland. And now he knows that he's just, uh, he's just a plant infected with a consciousness, uh, the echo of a man, it says. And so then he reaches out and he pulls something that was growing off of him. And he's like, look at these, he's growing these crazy, like vegetables, these, these tubers, he calls them off of his chest. Uh, and I think they might even be edible. They're kind of like yams. And she's like, oh my God, I'm going to be sick. So she like throws up just thinking about eating pieces of him or whatever. 
And every, like Matt Campbell's like, uh, she's not feeling good. Uh, we should go. And he's like, okay. And then, uh, and then <laughs> now we have Wood just there with Swamp Thing. And he's like, yes, yes, they're not like us, are they? Those meat bags. Uh, you know, like he's freaking out, like trying to talk to, to Swamp Thing. And he's even like, I envy you because I'm too meaty. Like even compared to you, you know, like he's basically Swamp Thing is all plant, no human. And Wood Drew's like, I want that. Because even though he is like uh, very plant like, kind of like um, Poison Ivy, um, even more so than Poison Ivy because his skin's actually like fucked up and everything. Um, but like he, he's still human ish underneath that. There's still like a bit of, he says, meat in him or whatever. So uh, he's envious of that, but he's going to figure it out. He's going to figure out how to get, uh, you know, to where Alec is, you know, hopefully become. Um, more more plant like so then we cut to like inside of swamp things head because uh wood juice says like how i wonder where you are like inside of your head and uh, we see alec is just thinking of linda his old wife who died and he just he's going through like an existential crisis he's at like some weird you know he's, he's imagining this like weird wedding where like uh it's like the after party of a wedding and uh, all the bad guys are there. Everybody he's ever met in the comics is there. And he's like, no, Linda, don't leave me. And then she's like dying. And then like someone's like, hey, put this suit on. You'll look great. And like put this big suit on him. And it ends up looking like the swamp thing. And it's just like this weird like thing he's going through, this existential crisis inside of himself. Um, and then uh, we cut to uh, Abby and... Uh, Matt again and she, Abby's going to the to the motor inn where they're staying and she's like you know I just want to go home and sleep you know she it says like she's been thinking about Matt she's been thinking about Woodrow she's been thinking about Alec and the edible tubers and whether or not she's losing her mind and as she's like walking up to um to the the door of their room she hears something and Matt is talking to some someone um and it's a woman and she says like, you can't really read it. Um, but it sounds kind of like suggestive, uh, from what she says. Um, and she's like voices, Matt's a woman's alone. And there's like, uh, a word here, a blurb phrase there, something about honey, something about no, she couldn't have said that who's in there. And then we see like, she kind of slightly opens the door and there's like, like a wood, like a, I don't know, a woman in some kind of skimpy bikini. And there's all these bugs and like demons around him and his chair. And he's just sitting there and he looks fucking frightening and terrible. And she's freaking out as she's like opening the door. She's seeing all this stuff. And then when she opens the door, he's just sitting there and she's like, Matt. And then, uh, he's like, yeah. And she's like, Oh, there's nothing there. Like, did she imagine that or what's going on? So, um, then we cut back to Woodrow, who's still doing experiments on Swamp Thing. He uh, apparently is looking inside of, like, he's opening Swamp Thing's eyes and he's shining lights in them and stuff. And he's like, nobody there at all. So he takes a tuber uh, and he goes, apparently he's got like a little pod he's staying at. And he, like, looks like he cooked the tuber for dinner just to see what it, uh, what it tasted like. And he, like, eats it and he goes, just as I thought perfectly edible and he says i hunger for that green that silent eternity i hunger for it and so um yeah uh he really really wants to be part of the green then we cut inside swamp thing's head again and he's having more nightmares about like the planarian worms and they're trying to steal uh linda from him and his body and they're like freaking him out it's just basically like he's going through his existential crisis in his head um and then, uh, I guess the next day, um, uh, we get, uh, Abby and Matt, they're back at Swamp Thing and she's like, come on, Alec, you're not a vegetable for God's sake, you're human. And then she says, and this is very telling cause this is the first time we've ever really like seen anything between Swamp Thing and Abby. And I thought this is what I thought was going to be the buildup in the uh, original, like 19 issues of this comic series of this saga of Swamp Thing uh, run was the stuff before Alan Moore, there must have been 
like some Abby relationship with him, but there wasn't. It was it just kind of Alan Moore's like, you know what? I think they should be together. So he starts interjecting these things where she says, like, Alec, you're the most loving, most gentle, most human man that I've ever met. Don't go. And she starts crying and like, you know, leaning on this mossy uh, body uh, that's there, like kind of rooted into the ground. And Matt Cable's standing right here, hearing all this. He he doesn't say anything to himself. I don't know how he feels about his wife saying, you know, Matt, you're the better than my husband or whatever. But uh, and then we see Woodjuice there, and he's like, oh, good, they're going uh, because Matt leads her away. And uh, he's like, if there's one thing I despise, it's the sound of steak sobbing. So. Woodrow's, you know, once again calling them a meat, you know, meat people or whatever. Uh, but he is, uh, we see like he's getting a little more green around the edges, we'll say. Like his hair is coming through his mask now and whatnot. Um, and yet he's still trying to like figure out um, how to become part of the green through Swamp Thing. So he says, uh, my intelligence is still too far human, you see. Too far removed from that Viridian state of grace. I need an intermediary. A, I need a go-between. Uh, wherever you are, my friend, you have uh, lost, uh, or wherever you have lost, you still have something that I want. So he basically needs Swamp Thing somehow. He's trying to figure out how as like a conduit to the green where he can like pass through. So Swamp Thing, once again, we cut back to inside his head, and now he's fighting all the monsters he's ever fought. He's got Arcane. Uh, and they're like pulling the body out of his hands. Uh, and there's like a dinosaur and everything. He's like, no, this is mine. And it's basically his skeleton that he's, he's holding on to. Um, and he basically yells enough and everybody dies away. And then we cut back to Woodrow who now has taken like a, a sample of Swamp Thing back with him. To, and he hooked it up to like some electrodes and then he put electrodes on his forehead so apparently he's created a machine that can like hopefully use swamp things little body that he cut off a little piece that he cut off to conduit through to the green so he gets to feel what swamp thing feels so he says like enough i need i needn't hesitate and no any longer i'm prepared prepared for my journey my green odyssey so he uh, switches that on and he's like, I'm in touch with you. And he like turns it on and basically fries his fucking skull. He, uh, he, this is one of the coolest pages of all time. It shows him like, at first he's like, oh, like, look at that. I can sense the coolness and the grass and oh, the grass that's like each blade of it, like next to my, uh, you know, my, uh, my container and then he's like oh and i now i can feel what's that like uh like i can feel redwoods redwoods are like thousands of miles away what the fuck and then he's like i can feel you know these flowers in alaska i can feel these people these flowers in like saudi arabia or whatever <laughs> so basically he realizes all of a sudden the green is too big for his little mind he's like enough no i can ah! and he's like freaks the fuck out and he like pulls off his mask, uh, like his skin. And basically he's driven mad by the green. And it says like the Floronic man is screaming. And so he runs out of his, his, uh, a little pod that he had and he's screaming and screaming and he's like, stop, please just stop. And he pulled all the stuff off of him. And then, uh, he, he starts talking to something and it says, what would you have me do? And somewhere in the jungle, of his mind, the small scared mammal that was Jason Woodrow twitches once and then lies still. And it begins to rain blossoms. Uh, he is the pharaonic man, and all that once was human is, is in him is consumed, engulfed, swamped. So uh, that is the end of this issue. He, the uh, pharaonic man, has now become one with the green, at least for a second. His uh, mind is shattered, his human mind. And uh, he, he believes he is now one with the green. So we'll see. The next issue is called Another Green World. And uh, Swamp Thing is still out for the count, uh, along with Matt Cable being all creepy. So, so uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email me at plainstrandsandcomicbooks, all one word at gmail.com. And until next time, stay swampy. Okay.